Hello, I'm John Reisman, and this is Centrist News and Perspectives, where we focus on evidence, reason, and logic to get closer to the truth and understand what's going on in the world. COVID-19, of course, is still going strong. It is not getting better, globally speaking. Some countries are doing better. America is doing much worse. In fact, let's thank Donald Trump for this, because he said we were going to be a success. He has made us essentially the corona capital of the world. That's the United States of America. Thank you, Mr. Trump, for making sure so many people are getting sick and, in fact, dying. Now, some people are going to be a little upset with me for saying that, but the reality is Donald could have done much better. He could have started shutting down things in January. He did not. He was slow on everything. He did not initiate the Defense Production Act. He should have as soon as he heard about this. And mind you, if it was any president other than Donald Trump, he would have heard about it earlier because most people were probably afraid to tell Donald, hey, you might have an, a, a pandemic during an election year. Now that's one of the biggest problems we have. Because Donald's ego is so big, it frightens people from actually telling him what needs to be done. And he doesn't like being told things anyway, because he's the great leader with the big brain and all this other weird whatever's going on in that head of his. But the reality is the Defense Production Act could have been prepped as early as December. He could have said, all right, we'll sign it. Figure out what we need. Do we need PPE? Do we need tests? Do we need lab equipment? Do we need, what do we need? And what's going on in China? Because we didn't hear about anything from China until December 31st. They were late. That's true. Now, they probably had a lot of confusion going on over there trying to say, well, are we going to be able to contain this? And maybe they thought they could. Once they realized they couldn't, then they probably said, we've got to talk about this. Now, I don't know what really happened there, and I'm not trying to give them any excuses. But we did have indications of this in November of 2019, and Donald wasn't informed. In, 2000, in December, we know, as far as we can tell, he wasn't informed. In January, he was informed, but mostly dismissed it. As soon as he found out he should have initiated the Defense Production Act, he should have been getting everything ready to roll. He also should have started shutting things down and saying, let's get everybody used to wearing masks. Now, he could have been a great leader and put on a mask and showed everyone that this is okay, wear a mask, be safe, and start exercising physical distancing. Did he do that? No. Is he wearing a mask now? No. Does he care about Americans? Apparently not, because he's about to have a rally, and at that rally, he actually has people signing disclosures saying, if you get sick and die because you came to my rally to promote me as the President of the United States and get me reelected, you're saying I'm not liable. So he's making them sign waivers before they come into the rally that if they die from coming to the rally, he's not responsible. He's already said he's not responsible for anything anyway. We already know he doesn't like to have responsibility. He likes to shove responsibility on everybody else because he is, in my opinion, the most irresponsible president, certainly in modern times, absolutely in my lifetime. He is also and I know some liberals will be offended by this. Donald is the most liberal president we've ever had. Period. End of story. Understand the definition of liberal. It means to freely give away. Instead of letting the market do its thing, he gave free money to the markets to hold them up so he can say he has a great economy. He doesn't have a great economy. All he's doing is putting the economy at risk, putting America at risk, and putting Americans at risk. Because the more you fluff up the economy into artificial inflation zone with a CAPE ratio hovering around 30, during a recession which might be a depression, then you are not a responsible president. And I'll be frank, you are an idiot president if you're doing that. And Donald is an idiot on this issue because he knows nothing about economics. He knows nothing about the balance of systems and methods required to have a healthy economy. He only knows how to cheat. And he's cheating the economy by throwing money at it from the Treasury Department. Oil didn't crash. It did in one contract, but it didn't crash in the rest, even though the storage systems were continuing to fill up. We don't know, but what if the Treasury Department is buying oil contracts? What if they're buying stock just to hold up the market? We don't know, because we're not allowed to investigate the president. Because William Barr, the Attorney General, appointed by Donald J. Trump, won't let us investigate anything. The Senate won't let us have witnesses, so we couldn't actually get him fully impeached. He only got impeached in the Congress. 
and he was impeached. Now he says he got away with it. He didn't. No witnesses were allowed to testify. That means he cheated again, and he cheats every single time. And if you are a Trump follower, and you say you're a conservative, because personally, I say if you're a Trump follower, you are not a conservative. You're like Donald. You're an extreme liberal. You want to give everything away. You want to give away America's liberty, freedom, economy, everything to free money for corporations, social welfare for corporations, or you can call it corporate welfare if you want to. But this is serious and this is real. Let's get back to COVID-19. The problem around the world is continuing to grow and we can see by the numbers that the total confirmed cases is growing and starting to pop. The total deaths is actually getting quite high now over 400,000, but we have about 7 million cases around the world and it's continuing to grow. Now let's take a look at America. You can see that the cases are continuing to grow in America. Rand Paul got on television, in, on C-SPAN I should say, and he tells everybody we need to be more like Sweden. Let's take a look at what he said. We're opening up a lot of economies around the, around the U.S. And I hope that people who are predicting doom and gloom and saying, oh, we can't do this, there's going to be a surge, will admit that they were wrong if there isn't a surge. The mortality per capita in Sweden is actually less than France, less than Italy, less than Spain, less than Belgium, less than the Netherlands, about the same as Switzerland. But basically, I don't think there's anybody arguing that what happened in Sweden is an unacceptable result. Basically, this morning there was an interview on Swedish public radio where he said those now infamous words that there was room for improvement in the Swedish strategy and he was talking about a couple of things basically the health care workers working with older people in nursing homes uh, taking care of older people at their homes that strategy had just hasn't worked in terms of protecting the elderly people uh, we're seeing almost half of the deaths being especially in nursing homes uh, he was also talking about uh, things like testing the national testing hasn't worked at all we also heard today from the the government's testing coordinator saying that Sweden should have tested much more right from the start and kept at it. Sweden uh, just stopped doing uh, testing and tracing uh, a couple of weeks into that pandemic. Okay, so he wants us to be like Sweden because they're more liberty oriented or more free or they didn't shut down. Well, let's take a look at Sweden's confirmed cases. Here they are, spiking. Rand Paul wants this scenario in America. He wants more Americans to get sick and die. Why would he want that? Hmm, let me think. Maybe he doesn't know what he's talking about, which it seems true, or he's just another butthead of the Trump administration, because it looks like all he cares about is his rhetoric, not actual facts and figures. This is what the cases look like. This is America. This is Sweden. Sweden is rising at an exponential rate, and Rand Paul wants us to be like Sweden. That's dumb. Sorry, Rand. Go read evidence. Start looking at reality. It's important. America needs you to actually have a brain. Now let's take a look at Switzerland. I want to compare Switzerland and America. Here's a country that actually leveled the curve, or called flattening the curve. And what they did there is they were responsible. The people were responsible. They didn't go running all about, not wearing masks, and being basically really, uh, let's say, liberal with their mo movements, if you will. Uh, they were more careful, and they leveled the curve. Now, many countries did this, so let's take a look at some. Australia is starting to get a handle on it. Austria is getting a bit of a handle. Italy is finally starting to control their situation. China, if you think about it, they were very early, and they got it under control rather quickly and flattened that curve. Take a look at France, Germany, New Zealand, of course, did a really good job, but they were on an island that uh, did help them. Same as Hawaii and America. Thailand is doing better. So all these countries are doing great, but let's go back and look at America. America is not doing great. We are still increasing our caseload. Mr. Trump says we're the greatest, so we should have flattened our curve immediately. And we didn't, because Donald does not know what he's doing, or doesn't care, or both. And that's the most likely scenario, because it is clear he doesn't care about American lives by the way he's treating these, this global pandemic that is killing people all around the world and killing more people in America than pretty much anywhere else. Now, there are some countries that are probably worse than us. I haven't looked at every per capita analysis, 
But I do know these people don't need to get sick and die because Donald should have acted much, much faster. Everything he's doing, every distraction, whether it's George Floyd or it's the economy or it's saying he's going to attack something, everything's a distraction to make sure you don't understand that he's killing Americans right now, today, and he's going to do it again tomorrow and he's going to do it again next week because he wants you to think there's nothing wrong. He also uses messages that say, hey, look, die for the economy of America. Well, America is not its great economy. America is about liberty, honor, truth, and justice. And that's what we were founded on. Those were the values and principles that created the United States of America. And Donald Trump doesn't give a rat's butt about any of it. I'm John Reisman, and this is Centrist News and Perspectives.